Well, it, it took us a guy from L.A., our man Lane, to come up with Come to the Sip. So I'm, I'm on his bandwagon right now, so I, I enjoyed that, so it's good. So I'll probably be wearing some of those on the, on the sideline like they're doing in football. Uh, appreciate you guys being with us. Uh, you know, I kind of will start by our recruiting class that, that we had. Uh, these guys have been committed for a while, and, uh, but you're always – always anxious until you get the official paperwork and kind of started out with, with Deshaun Ruffin, um, who we've been involved with for a long time since we've gotten the job at Ole Miss, dynamic point guard from Jackson and uh, terrific, terrific player, great family. And uh, James White, uh, who we think's re really a guy that's got a great chance. Uh, maybe some people think he may be the best scorer in the state of Georgia, 6'5", very skilled. Uh, athletic, another guy loves basketball. He's already gained probably about, oh, 10 or 12 pounds just during this COVID. And, uh, and then Grant Slatton, I've known Grant for a long time. Uh, one of the best shooters, I think, in this whole class. 6'6", 200 pounds, extremely athletic. Scored a bunch of points at Sparta High School in Tennessee. And uh, so just three great families, uh, great support systems, and we all think they're gonna be terrific here. Nate, start us off. Is there ever any nervousness or anxiousness about Deshaun coming down the stretch? You know, it, it just wasn't just because uh, we just stayed in touch with him just every single day. And Wynn Cage did a, did a great, great job there. And, you know, when he committed to us in the summer, uh, you know, he just is his mom and just he loved Ole Miss. Uh, he wanted to be close to home. Uh, he loves the fact that two hours and 15 minutes – you know, he can, he can be right here and the family can be here. You know, he won a state championship in our building, so he had a great, I think, 35, and he played great. So it was, it's always, we're always anxious, don't get me wrong, but, but it was just never any doubt this is where he was going to be, and we just thought for sure he'd sign on the first day. What does it mean for a program in general to have a guy, I mean, highest-rated recruit in program history, and I guess if you just – pull up the top 50 or whatever, and kids will see Ole Miss there beside one of those names. What does that mean for a program? Yeah, it means, it means a great deal for, for, for universities like us that are, you know, we, we, we have swung for the fences and we've gotten beaten in some high-level recruiting battles, and that's what's going to happen. We, we've won uh, our share. Uh, you know, Matthew Morrell, obviously, the year before, you know, like the 35th, 36th best player in the country uh, from Memphis. And obviously, Deshaun – because if he had gotten a chance to be on the circuit again, you know, this summer, you know, he's just one of those. He, he may be as good, maybe the most electrifying scorer in the whole class. I mean, he's just something what he can do. And it's one of them guys that you, really, you just can't take your eyes off of when you start watching him play. And so I had the people and other really good players, even the class of 22, they all know him. They all respect him. They've all played against him or with him. And so I think he can help you down the road recruiting-wise. We'll go to Joe. Yeah, uh, Coach, uh, sticking with uh, Deshaun, you mentioned that, you know, you guys were on him, you know, when you got the job. Um, what did you see from him um, early on in the recruiting process? And, you know, why was he a priority even when he was uh, a youngster coming up, you know, learning how to play? Yeah, you know, Joe, when I first got the job, it was in April recruiting, and uh, he was playing in a 16 and under game, and uh, he had just finished the ninth grade. And I watched him for about two minutes. And uh, my assistant, Wynn Case, and I, and I think Wynn was maybe another, I said, Wynn, I caused you to come over and watch this kid play. It was a young team from Mississippi. It was just something about him. He was just small, probably no telling what he weighed, probably 140 pounds or something. But just the way he moved, how tough he was, uh, just he was just dynamic. You know, he's like he's even at that age, just, you know, one of those electrifying guys that I enjoyed. And so we got back and offered him on the spot. And then just from there, just started uh, – the recruiting process started. Go to Ben. Oh, sorry, Joe. To that, what was it like seeing him grow as a player and then having the front row seat to see him play, you know, a big game, state championship? And, and, and yeah, it – you know, it is. You know, when you start recruiting a kid, everybody says, gosh, you've offered him when he just finished his ninth grade year. But the day does come, you know, when these guys start going to college and, and with great players like Deshaun, a lot of time the process needs to start at that age. And it really was. It's just – it's fun. At, you know him, Joe. As a, he's just he's got this great personality, you know. And you look at – I was looking at his face on your – 
your Twitter that you you posted, and he looks like he's about 15 years old still. You know, he's got that baby face, and he's small. And uh, but it's been fun just to watch him grow as a person. His mother Twyla is just terrific. Then obviously David Sanders, you know, is a great player here at Ole Miss, and David's one of the, the very best coaches in our state. So he's getting taught and you know coached at a high level all the time. So. And he's just going to continue. Boy, his ceiling is still so high, you know. And uh, he'll come in. You've seen him. He, he, one thing he doesn't lack is confidence. And he thinks he belongs in every game against every player. And that's what you got to have in our league. Ben, go ahead. Yeah, Kermit, that's three guards in the fall. What's the approach to the spring then, especially considering, you know, Romello could be gone, um, Hadeem could be gone. Uh, is it just about roster evaluation and kind of seeing where you are in the spring? Yeah, it is. You know, I think obviously it's going to be front court players, forwards, bigs uh, that can play. You know, we're kind of involved with with one more high level guy, and we're waiting. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh, but but after that, Ben, it's going to be, you know, transfer market. Uh, the one year transfer is going to pass in January, and so that's going to be the new thing in in, in college basketball, and it's going to go up forever. And so. Uh, you, you hate to say it, but it's the reality that everybody's going to be evaluating everybody's roster. That's just where it's gotten to. It's going to be football and it's going to be basketball. And if you're not doing that, then you're behind the times. So everybody's going to be evaluating all rosters, and uh, ours will be front court. Uh, we're involved with a, a really good junior college big that won't make his mind up in, in, uh, in the early period, but in the spring. Uh, but, but that really is front court to be the priority. Nick, go ahead. Kermit, you brought up Deshaun this year and Matthew Morrell last year, just back-to-back -back years getting the highest rate recruit in school history. Was this something you had as a priority when you got here to kind of change the way Ole Miss recruited? And if so, what have you done to kind of make Ole Miss more of an attractive destination for those top recruits? Yeah, and you know, a Andy had some really good players. and uh, But it was just the fact of, you know, even like Austin Crowley, you know, was a four-star recruit and uh, was, a, was a highly recruited player. And I know we had to get him from Vanderbilt after the, the coaching change, but, but really kind of three guys from, you know, from our area. You know, I, I just think this. I, I think, number one, you got to have a great product to sell, and we do at Ole Miss. you got to have facilities to sell, and we've got some of the very best in college basketball. And maybe the Pavilion is the best arena in our league. Not the biggest, but the best. Uh, and then you got to have a staff, number one, that are very good and believes in the product that they sell. And we've got that. I've got three great assistants. i got a whole staff full of, of really good assistant coaches. And I think it's, it's how do you package it? You know, and you start packaging Ole Miss and facilities and education. Now, if you, want a, if you want a big city, we're not your spot. But if you want a great college environment that people care about their university. And then the biggest thing, too, guys, I can't tell you how our players sell it. And we got guys from L.A., Chicago, Harlem, Orlando, everywhere, L.A., and they all love Ole Miss. They enjoy Oxford. I mean, they just enjoy going to school here. So you get a kid that has a relationship with our players – I mean, they'll convince you that this is a great, great place to go to school. Go to John. Kermit, obviously, you know, the season's starting in, uh, in less than two weeks. Uh, how does kind of uh, everything stand? How are your guys doing? And um, obviously, in an unconventional season, how's everyone kind of holding up? Yeah, you know, John, what, what you were all knock on wood about COVID, and we all had our tests, and everybody was negative. And you hold your breath. Now we're testing on Tuesday, so like Wednesday morning or Tuesday night, you're kind of holding your breath from the call from the trainer, uh, worried about your players, worried about yourself. You know, when Tom Izzo can get it, you know, I mean, you just you, you you never know. You try to be as careful as you can. But but then sometimes we forget about just normal basketball injuries. Like we had Romello and and Hadim C. You know, our two starting kind of bigs, you know, at that at that spot collided. They both had concussions. Romello just came back full contact yesterday for the first time. Hadim C will be out probably until Monday. Uh, we've had Devontae Shooter kind of got nicked up with a back injury and he didn't participate in the in our pavilion madness last night. It's minor and it's great that 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 those that they will be back. So you have to deal not only with COVID, but obviously just just the regular basketball things that you go through. Um, 
Our team has been really competitive. Uh, our, I've, we've had really, really good, tough practices. I, I like our team. I like coming to the gym with our team. I know the league is going to be really, really good. Uh, but I think over the next under two weeks, I think everybody in college basketball is trying to get their practices down to a hour th 45, hour 30. I mean, you got to get your legs back and be fresh. Uh, but I know one thing, we're really looking forward to uh, to the Justin Reed Classic that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And it's going to be, we don't have any exhibitions or scrimmages, so it's going to be evaluation and, and trying to, to, to get guys minutes and to watch those guys play in those three games. And then a, a quick follow-up to that was uh, talking about a guy like KJ. What are kind of your expectations for him uh, this year? How do you want to kind of see his game develop? Well, he's got to become a more confident shooter. He's got to be a, a guy that goes to next play. He needs to be a guy that uh, is thought at the end of the year as being an all-league SEC forward. That's the jump he's got to make or that he needs to make. Uh, but he's got to be a, a guy that can go to the next play. He can't let one call affect the next play. He can't let one shot affect the next shot uh, because he's, he's a good rebounder. He's very skilled for his size. He's got great experience in our league. Uh, but you're right, kind of that next step to be an all-league player is, is the next one for him. Neil, go ahead. Hey, Kermit, this really isn't about your program necessarily, just the sport in general. With these contact tracing rules the way they are right now, you see it with football this weekend. How, how difficult is it going to be to get most of the season in? Yeah, you know, Neil, I just – it's, 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 it can be difficult, and I just think that you know these setbacks are coming. I know it's been a rough week for, for SEC football because you can imagine it was, it, they were on kind of smooth sailing for a long period of time, you know. And uh, this, we, we talk to our guys all the time and just what, what, do you, what is social tracing? I mean, you know, six feet apart for 15 straight minutes. Now they're social tracing. You know, everybody's going to have these chips, you know, and the social tracing during chips if there's a game and somebody from Kentucky tests and we're, we're on the same floor as Kentucky. You know, this chip can talk about, can, can give you data. Uh, were they 15 minutes apart, a close proximity? And there's even been thinking about, Neil, for the first free throw, of if it's a two-shot foul, not to bring your guys to the line. Uh, but the second time, what is ways, you know, so you think about in football, it's probably those linemen that lean, each, uh, lean on each other all the time. In basketball, it's going to be probably those two centers. They just kind of come to each other all the time. You know, they lean on each other to more physical play. Uh, but all you can do is control your team. And all we talk about, guys, if you ride in a car, you cannot ride in a car with a guy for over 15 minutes. You understand that. If you're going to play a Nintendo game or a 2K game, whatever you're going to play, Fortnite, whatever you play, you're going to have to be 10 feet apart. I mean, you, you, those are things that you can control. And the parties, all the different things outside. So sometimes maybe in competition you can't control it, but, but those day-to-day -day things, all we talk about is that. And so it's something we'll just keep trying to emphasize. Number two, Neil, is – Depth is going to be a huge factor in this SEC race, not just for injuries, for COVID. Uh, guys who can play multiple positions are going to – we've seen Lane move offensive guys to defensive guys. I mean, a guy who can play the two, three, four, and a five. Can your four-man play the two? I mean, all those kind of things, it's just kind of what we're going to be up against during the, during the season. Do you travel differently when, when you guys get yes. around to travel? Do you put one in a room instead of two in a room? I mean, how do you – some of the stuff, I know you can't avoid it. Do you travel to the arena at a different time, that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're just – you know, it's going to be more bus trips, you know, and try to socially distance. It's going to be limited travel parties, not as many managers, not a lot of the guys that will be going on trips that uh, are used to. I think it will be two to a room. You know, obviously I've, I've, I've just kind of watched – video of, of, of pregame meals with Ole Miss. It's seen, you know, they'll have social distancing, but there's still guys at the tables. Uh, you know, there's obviously the arenas are going to be set up uh, differently. Uh, obviously, we're going to be on no commercial flights. I mean, early, like we're busing to Middle Tennessee and then we're busing to Dayton after we play them and kind of stay an extra day at in Murfreesboro, would have normally come back and chartered to Dayton. I think we will charter back. Uh, from Dayton, but a lot of these, you know, games that are, you know, in proximity, probably be busing and try to stay out of, you know, different things that we can do. Obviously, from a cost standpoint, and then from a, a COVID standpoint, the things that worry are hotels. 
I mean, just picking up a channel changer in your room. I mean, it's just different things. The person that waits on you at the table. I know these people are, you know, different precautions. In my world, I, and I mentioned to a couple of SEC coaches, I didn't really bring it up to the league office, I wish we'd have gone all SEC games personally. I wish we'd have played a 26-game SEC schedule and just play a round robin. And uh, terrible for head coaches, great for fans and media and, you know, and uh, in the SEC network. Uh, but I, just because of dealing with all of these makeup different games, Neil, you know, at least you've got people on the same page that, that you can try to get through it together. Well, how was that received when you pitched the 26-game SEC schedule? They didn't like that very much at all, okay? And I didn't pitch it up in front of the whole group. I think Cal wanted to play his Louisville game. I, I don't know if Cal wanted to play his Louisville game or not. We didn't ask Jerry at this year at a particular time. But uh, I think they wanted their national games. And, yeah, and, and like I said, it wasn't any, it's not really good for head coaches and our records, but probably for fan base, SEC network. But, but, uh, but I know the SEC, I, and our people have done a great job, like everybody in the SEC – like if our MTE event, Jackson State, Arkansas State, uh, Central Arkansas, they're going to have to take this test on a Tuesday and everybody be negative before they get on the bus and come. And then we're paying for their testing while they're here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that's our cost. So the guarantees that we're paying them, Neil, are not as high, okay? But a lot of that other things is based on – you know, we're going to be paying for, for COVID testing for these non-conference teams that maybe don't have the same testing as we do uh, at Ole Miss and up to SEC uh, protocol. We'll go to Jerry. Hey, Jerry, I think you're muted. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about the, the fluid rosters and the increased – transfers and as you say people evaluating other rosters how uh, what challenge does that bring to a coach to have to mesh a lot of new players into a unit year after year after year yeah you know I, I just think this uh, Jerry it's like you know the the seniors all getting everybody getting extra years so you start looking at at rosters how young everybody is uh, right now you know around the country and, like, we have four seniors on our team, Hadeem C., Romello White, Devontae Shuler, Demencio Vaughn. They all can come back the next year. And we would have 17 scholarships instead of 13. So that, that's, that's something that we're all going to have to manage. I think it was a great rule because I think what everybody was worried about, it's the right thing to do with the kid. But all of a sudden, if games start getting canceled in football or basketball, who's going to opt out? Is it too many for a redshirt year? Can I not get it back? I'm, I'm going to sit out this season. So I think that put everybody at ease. But, Jerry, I'm telling you, people really don't understand, Jerry, the world that's fixing to happen in college athletics over the next three or four years. And just the turnover. Uh, and it's not just going to be the star quarterback at Alabama, the backup quarterback. It's going to be the backup defensive lineman. It's going to be the backup center. It's going to be – uh, the guy that's that's at Alabama or, or Ole Miss that's you know the seventh or eighth man. So it's going to be a lot of turnover, and everybody's just going to have to be fluid with it. And it's just going to be a different day and time. You you put that in there, Jerry, with the name, image, and likeness. I mean, it, it is going to be a different world. It, it's going to be a pro world in a college amateur market, and that's just where we're at. Does does a guy like John Calipari have an advantage since he's been? meshing new rosters year to year for a decade now. I've always I've always talked about, you know, the job that, that Cal has done with his team. I think you and I maybe had a conversation, you know, just, just the young players and, and having a whole new team every single time. It's almost going to have to draw back, Jerry, my days when I was a junior college coach. And you would just, you know, it'd have ten or eight or nine, ten new guys every single time. And so, yeah, we're going to have to get used to it. But – I think we're going to have to do a great job with the players in your program, re-recruit your players all the time. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be a, a big thing, that you have people that obviously they love the University of Kentucky. They love Ole Miss, and they're going to be here, you know. And uh, so our assistant coaches, we're all going to have to keep doing just a better job to re-recruit your players and try to sell them on the fact of keep growing in a program and, uh, you know, and just the transfer market, but it's going to happen. Parish. Kermit, do you have an an estimate on uh, game times for your uh, Justin Reed Classic? 
Yeah, I think so, uh, Parrish. We were hoping to go 3 o'clock all three days, uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The women on Wednesday, uh, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, I think is going to maybe play the late game maybe at 6 o'clock. So what we're hoping, Parrish, is that the first game of the, of the Justin Reed Classic will start at noon, and then our games will start at 3. Now, there is in these classics – there's kind of a, a wipe down period, you know, of sanitizing seats and different the floor and different things. So sometimes that's about 20 or 25 extra minutes. You know, used to in these classics or NCAA tournament game, uh, you know, the handshakes, boom, and here comes the next game. So it's going to be a little period of time between. So I would think uh, three, no later than 3:30. But we're going to we're going to stay with the same game times all three days. Oh, how has uh, Deshaun Ruffin overcome his size? to be an explosive scorer? Just, I'll tell you one thing, uh, if you go watch him play, he can shoot it, he's strong, but he looks like a running back. You know, he's built, he's real physical, he can take hits, he can get his shoulder by you, he's very athletic at the rim, and he's just about as, I mean, I don't know if there's another guy in the, in the whole 21 class that is that athletic with the ball. I mean, I mean, in his whole career, all he's done in Mississippi is face double teams, triple teams. I mean, people just running at him from every different direction. And, uh, yeah, he just – and he's one of those little guys. I know it's cliche-ish, but he has kind of a chip on his shoulder. You know, and you, you remember, remember Stephon Moody, you know, small guy, and just but just had this compact game that was so athletic, could get the spots, could shoot it with range. Little guys will struggle. They can't shoot. You know, but but they shine. He can he can really shoot with range. Nate, go ahead. Coach, I mean, we're only about two weeks away from the start of the season. What are your expectations for this team? Like, how high of a ceiling do you think you guys have? You know, I think that you know, obviously, we want to be right in the mix to win an SEC regular season championship, and that that's our goal. And uh, is it high? Sure is. But, you know, that's exactly what we're going to try to do. Is it going to be difficult? No question. We'll probably be picked anywhere from ninth, eighth, seventh, sixth, whatever that it may be. Um, but I, I do think that we've got depth. I, I like our team. Uh, but it's the SEC is a league that you guys all know. You can finish first or you can finish eighth. And you can finish eighth or ninth and be an NCAA tournament team and still get to a Sweet 16 or a Final Four. I just think the league – this year is probably the most depth. I think I, I, I'd follow it that probably the league has the possibility of more NCAA tournament teams than maybe it's ever had. And you're going to see a team that's maybe can be picked 11th or 12th, but can definitely be an NCAA tournament team and win a game. So the competition is going to be fierce, uh, but you know we're just going to keep working. And uh, I like our non-conference schedule. I like that we're at home early, and uh, and uh, and just get a chance to hopefully. Uh, get some experience under our belt, and uh, but but we hope to. What you liked uh, is to be in the last two or three weeks of this year and playing meaningful meaningful games that are that are relevant to trying to win a championship. Go back to Ben. Yeah, Kermit, um, y'all appealed and actually won Robert Allen's eligibility question. So, so getting him and having him available to you described him as a Kermit Davis player. What can he provide, and, and what has he brought so far as far as practice? He just he's he's one of the toughest guys that you'll that you'll coach. Uh, his motor is just nonstop. He's six eight two thirty. He just pursues every rebound, uh, plays with detail. He just eat up with basketball. I mean, he just he's in the gym all the time. He wants he stops by and he wants to watch tape all the time. He's just that kind of guy. And it was been it was really kind of you know with Hadim and Romello being out for both eight or ten days. I mean, Robert, you know, he just almost got new life. I mean, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying it, but when I called him, and I mean, he just kind of was crying un uncontrollably. He was so happy, you know, and he couldn't wait to call his mom and his dad. And so uh, he's a guy that's going to be built for how we play, and he's going to see a lot of playing time because it's just hard to keep a guy like that off the floor. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, Coach, uh, I know you're mentioning the Justin Reed Classic and um, – I guess tell me about how, how that how that came together and specifically uh, Jackson State getting involved. I don't think they've been on the schedule for a long time. And of course, Reed uh, used to play for uh, Wayne Brent, being assistant at Ole Miss. What's it like just having uh, Jackson State back in the mix and you know uh, coach coming back to, to Oxford uh, to kick off the season? 
Yeah, you know, it's just uh, I have a lot of respect for Wayne, and obviously I saw those those high school teams play when when he had those great high school teams there uh, at Provine. And, uh, you know, I, I called Keith. I said, Keith, we need to name the tournament. And Keith just right off the bat So let's call it Justin Reed Classic. I said, that is perfect, you know. And then so with that, uh, we wanted to get an in-state team. We, we really thought in our in our classic we needed to get teams that were close, you know. And so obviously we named it Justin Reed. I said, God, it'd be perfect to get Wayne, who was his high school coach, and obviously was was an assistant coach on some great teams for Rod at Ole Miss. So that was a great fit. And uh, you know, and you can't find a better man uh, to name it after than Justin Reed. I mean, he may be one of the most popular players to ever play at this school. Not only did he impact winning, but how he handled his business. He got a great family, and uh, so we're really excited about that. But really, it just when the first time I asked Keith, that was the first name that hit his tongue, and uh, and that was great, and it was just perfect.